So when we start with section 9.1, we're going to be introducing functions. And a lot of this should be things you've seen before, um, but there is a lot to this section. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, first, we need to talk about whether a variable is dependent or independent. Uh, dependent is where I have a variable that is affected by another variable. by another variable. Independent is when the variable is not affected by the other variable. These words are pretty simple if you just kind of take into consideration. I have a lot of students here that are 18 and they're still dependent. Well, why? Well, even though they're sitting here, uh, you know, and they're like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm independent. Well, yeah, but if you still have most of your money uh, being taken care of by your parents, um, go into the idea that we just had tax season. If your parents pay for most of it, they get to claim you as independent. What you do is affected by them. Uh, independent would be like well me with my parents right when when i used to come home if i'd come home at two o'clock my mom would like freak out because i was dependent when i was younger right well now that i'm independent if i come home at you know two in the morning my mom doesn't care my mom doesn't know i am now de in i am now independent so that we do no uh no longer affect each other in that situation uh now keep in mind my wife and i are still dependent so if i'm coming home at two o'clock she's like uh, yeah, what's going on? But that's that's kind of the idea. So dependent, one is affected by the other. When you become independent, your mom no longer is like, "What are you? Where were you until till two in the morning?" Well, none of your business. I'm independent now, right? All right. Um, what else do we have? Well, dependent and independent generally are independent. We label it as our x our x variable, and the dependent we label as the y variable. Why is that? Why is that true? Because normally we plug in, plug in x's, and then we get out from that by inputting those x's, we get out the y values by plugging in the x values, okay? Um, we also have the terms domain and range. Domain are all possible x values versus range are all of our possible y values. I'm going to extend this idea of domain, and we're going to be doing a lot more with domain this chapter. Um, what we're going to be looking for is, are there any restrictions on x? Is there anything x can cannot equal? Okay. So uh, we'll come back to these definitions as we keep going, but I'm going to go ahead and just do, here's, a, here's an easy example of something we've dealt with in the past. If five gallons of gas costs $11, eight gallons of gas costs $17.60. What's our dependent? What's our independent, right? Which variable is affected by the other? Do I have so much money and that's that then you know affects how much gas I have, or do I get as much gas as I need and that affects the cost? Well, generally, the gallons are what we purchase, that's what we input, that's our x. That is the independent variable. See, I'm not going to say I've got $100 in my wallet, so I'm going to get, you know, friggin' 30 gallons of gas in my 10-gallon tank. That makes no sense. I'm going to plug in the x, the gallons that I need, and I'm going to get out the dependent variable, the y, which is the cost. Right? And then if I input a different x, then I get a different y. Okay? So the gallons, the gas that we're putting in, would be the independent variable. The y would be the dependent, the one that is affected by how much gas I bought. This isn't a huge issue at this point, uh, but that is something we do focus on a little more in statistics. So um, some of this we're kind of prepping you for that. Here is a function. Well, maybe. What is the definition of a function? Every x value 
maps to exactly or has exactly one y value that it maps to. Every x goes to exactly one y value. That would be a function. Okay. Now don't get confused. I can have two different x values that map to the same y value as long as it's one y value. <clears throat> if something functions it works, right? So think of it this way, right? My car functions if I turn the key and the engine turns on. Now if every time I turn the key the engine turns on but one time, one time I turn the key and the trunk pops open we got a problem. That input, that input should map to only one output. Every time I turn the key, the engine should turn on. But what if the result I was looking for was to unlock my car? Well, I can unlock my car multiple ways. I could take the key on the door and I could unlock the car that way. Or I have a little keyless thing and I push the button and it unlocks my car. Or some people have like the fancy keys where it literally senses the key in your pocket and it unlocks the car. But the idea is you have multiple inputs that give us the same output, the same result. When something no longer functions is when I push the unlock button and my windows start rolling up and down. We got a problem with that car, right? So every input, every X maps to exactly one Y. Now that's X to one Y or you can have multiple X's map to the same Y. All of these would be examples of functions. So is this first one a function? We have an input and we have an output. Does every x map to one y? This maps to one, this maps to one, this maps to one, then yes this is a function. <coughs> what is the domain? Well, the domain are, what are the x values, right? 1, negative 3, and 4. What is the range? Well, the range are the y values. So 2, 5, and 3. Is this one a function? This x goes to exactly 1y. This x goes to this one y. That's not a problem. These two x's can go to the same y. What is the problem? That this x, this input, goes to a 6 and a 0. This is not a function. Right? y, well the domain, the x values are negative 1 and negative 2, and the range would be the 6 and the 0, and what was the issue here? This negative 2, that x, went to both y values. So that made it not a function. Here's kind of an easy example, kind of outside of math. What if I was scheduling classes, and I have people scheduling classes. Richard goes, you know, I'm, I'm crazy. I'm going to take an ADM class. And so he signs up for math, because math is best in the morning, right? You're like, okay. And Tina goes, no, nah, I'm not up for that. I'm going to go ahead and sign up for English. Is this currently a functioning schedule? Can Richard take math and Tina take English at 8 a.m.? Absolutely. What about Tom? Tom's like, I got a thing for Tina, so I'm going to go take English and hang out with Tina. Is that okay? Now, maybe he was a creeper, I don't know. But every X, every input, every person currently has one class. This is still a functioning schedule. Now, what if Tom was somehow able to also sign up for science? Would that be a problem? See, this was not a problem. Tina and Tom can take English. The problem is Tom cannot take both English and science at the same time. This is not a functioning schedule. Tom screwed it all up. He signed up for two classes at the same time. That input cannot have two outputs. Two inputs can go to the same class. Two inputs can have one output. But Tom cannot be in two classes at the same time. All right. How about... 
this. Is it a function? We have x's, we have y's. Do I have any x's that map to the same y or to different y values? So if you say no, then this is a function. If you're not sure, there's a nice way of checking uh, visually. I could take these points, 2, 3, negative 5, 8, and 4, 10. And I can check what's called the vertical line test. The vertical line test does is it says if I have a um, every or a vertical line should cross at only one point. Anytime I draw a vertical line, it should only cross. So this crosses at one. This vertical line crosses at 1. No matter what, if I draw a vertical line, it would only cross at only one point. If that is true, it is a function. <clears throat> what about this next point? Negative 3, 0, negative 1, 4, 1, 7, and 3, 7. Is this functioning? People are scared about this, and they're like, I don't know. Let's see. Does this x go to more than one y value? No. Does this x go to more than one y value? No, it just goes to the same y value. This is still a function. If you don't like that, plot the points. Negative 3, 0. Negative 1, 4. 1, 7. And 3, 7. This is what we were worried about right here, right? But if I draw a vertical line, the vertical line only crosses each one one time. Then this is still a function. So you're like, well, I could draw a horizontal line. Well, great, there's a horizontal line test. But that's not for functions. That's for one-to-one -one functions, which comes up later on. So basically, this is still a function. Every x goes to exactly one y value. Okay? What about this next one? Some of you are going, oh, I see it. What do you see? This x shows up twice, and it goes to two different y values. This is not a function. Visually, what would that look like? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, negative 4, 4. These two aren't a problem, but the minute I do 6, 5, we got a problem because a vertical line would cross at two points, more than one point. Therefore, this is not a function. We also need to be familiar with function notation. f of x, we read that as function of x. f of x is the same thing as y y is a function of x. We input an x and we get a y value. Okay. This does not mean does not mean f times x. I understand that's confusing because everywhere in else in algebra parentheses mean to multiply. This does not mean f times x. Function notation. Literally we just replace the y with an f of x. So what do we do? Well, I can take all these x values and I plug them in for this x. And when I plug them in for that x, it also plugs into this x. Whatever I put in here, gets plugged into the equation. So f of negative 2 would mean 3 times x. 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. This is our x value. This is our y value. When I plug in a negative 2, I get negative 6. Uh, f of 0 would be 3 times 0, or 0. 
Notice we're not able to solve for f, and it does because that's not f times x. f of 5 would mean 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Each of these is a different ordered pair or a different point. Every point we have there is x comma f of x. So the first point is negative 2, negative 6. The second point is 0, 0. And the third point is 5, 15. Is this a function? Quick review some things. Does every x go to 1y? Yes, it does. So yes, it is a function. Do not fall for this. This is okay. You have two different x's going to the same y value. I'm opening my car two different ways. That's okay. I need every x to go to one y. What is the domain here? Well, the x values are 6, 1, negative 9. What are the range values here? Well, the output or the y values are m and n. Is this a function? This x goes to 1y. This x goes to 1y. This x goes to y, 1y. This is a function. See, and you're like, well, look, though that negative 2 went to 3, that 1 went to 3, and that 2 went to 3. We are not worried about them lining up horizontally. This passes the vertical line test, and it is a function. Our domain here would be negative 2, 1, and 2. Our range would be the number 3. Is this one a function? Every x goes to 1y, this x goes to 1y, this x, this x goes to 1y. Yes, it is a function. What is the domain? Well, the x values, negative 3, 0, 2, 4. The range, 2, negative 3, 1, and I don't need to write that one again. Every x goes to 1y, then it is a function. If you're not sure, plot the points. Negative 3, 2. 0, negative 3. 2, 1. And 4, 1. This is okay. Every point passes the vertical line test. Is this a function? Like it's a friggin' circle, I don't know. Well, if I drew a vertical line, what would happen? It would cross the function at two points. Therefore, it is not a function. What would the domain be? Well, what are the x values? Looks like this is the y-axis, so negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 7, about there at negative 8, and all the way to 0. So the domain would be between negative 8 and 0. Our range, how far up and down does it go? Well, the lowest it goes is negative 1. The highest it goes is, looks like, 5. This is, a func uh, this is not a function, because it does not pass the vertical line test. Is this one a function? A parabola? Well, any vertical line I draw only crosses at one point. Therefore, yes, it is a function. Our domain, the graph goes left forever and right forever. Negative infinity to infinity. The range, the graph goes up forever, but it doesn't go down forever. It has a lowest point at a y value of 1. So the range would start at a minimum of 1 and go on to infinity. Let's keep going. Last, how do I check domain from an equation? This goes back to the beginning. What did we say? Domain were just x values, range were just y values, but 
We also said that we are looking for, where did it go? Right there. Are there any restrictions on the x? Is there anything that x can or cannot equal? Okay. Well, in algebra there is. See, if I look at this, if I have the square root of a number, if I have the square root of an a, then that means, what can't I square root? We don't square root negative numbers, so a must be greater than or equal to zero. a must be positive. Okay? If we have a fraction, we've seen this before, a cannot equal zero, right? We cannot divide by a zero. If it's a linear function, all real numbers for the domain. If it's a parabola, all real numbers. Why? Because there's no number I can't plug in to a linear function. There's no number I can't plug into a quadratic. Plus, visually, a line goes left and right forever. Domain left forever, right forever. Same thing with the parabola. We just saw a parabola. Look, it went left forever and right forever. The domain would be all real numbers. So, okay. First example. That looks like a parabola, but it's not. First of all, that's not y equals. So what would we need to do? Well, we could square root both sides and get that y is equal to the square root of x. Is there anything? Now I see that this is that square root of a. Is there anything we can't square root? Yep. That x must be positive. It must be greater than or equal to 0. That would be the domain. x is any number greater than or equal to 0. This next one is not tested just because it's a... a but, I mean, I, I could have a linear one, but this one has a y-intercept at negative 3, a slope of 1, and y is greater than or equal to, so it would shade everywhere above the line. Okay, la di da But the question is, what is the domain? Well, what are the x values? If it's a linear function, it goes right forever. How do I know? An arrow goes right forever, it goes left forever. Therefore, the domain would be all real numbers, or from negative infinity to infinity. This we've seen before, rational fractions, right? That denominator cannot equal zero. This we saw on our previous test, so this shouldn't freak us out. If I solve this, x cannot equal a negative 4. So what's the domain? All real numbers except a negative 4. And once again, if I have a square root, what's the restriction? That square root cannot be negative. So that x plus 2, or I'm sorry, x minus 2, must be positive, must be greater than or equal to 0. Adding the 2, x is going, has to be greater than or equal to 2. Why? Can it can it be 0? Can you do the square root of 0? Absolutely you can, right? Plug a 2 in there. Square root of 0 is 0. I cannot plug in a 1 because I would end up with a square root of a negative 1. That's not a real solution. So therefore, based on the algebra, there's a restriction on x that x must be greater than or equal to 2 to keep everything in the square root positive.